Sometimes prayer is like cooking food. It's not about putting the food on fire. You will have to leave the food on fire until the food is done. Hi, my name is Shibomi and this is Slice, the show where we talk about everything and anything and everything to ensure that we are equipped as God's disciples. Today, I'm on the show with two incredible people, Deji and Sharon. So, Deji, how are you? Sharon, how are you? I'm fine, Shibomi. Um, it's really um, exciting to be here today. Yeah, it's really nice. Hi, Shibomi. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, wow. I mean, it's Deji's jacket, man. This is your jacket. I'm, 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 I'm it's, thinking it's a swag of, now. It's, it's a swag. swag. That's a swag, right? Yeah. Eh? Swag is really touch floor. The swag is really touch floor. Yeah. And of course, I'm doing uncle with Sharon. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So how was service on Sunday? Ha, service was phenomenal. Um, it was a very hot hugging one. Um, it was a phenomenal one. One thing I really liked about the series is the fact that Pastor B has been speaking to us as a father, um, not just the pastor okay. and the teacher. So it's been all of them combined in one, and it's been an amazing experience. Ah, that's cool. Mr. Deji. I mean, service role for me was um, was amazing, um, especially because I learned the first service. Yeah. So the first service, we get to like take a deep dive into those real issues. And then we get to pray for people who are experiencing hurt, pain, and pray for their healing. So it was, I think for me, the first service is like an all-round service. All -round yeah. service. So yeah, that's my service. That's your service. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm always in all services anyway. <laughs> so I mean, I can't, I can't go anywhere. I'm always in all services. But the, the topic of communication and how to kill hurt and how to make relationship better is something that is very, very unique, especially at this crucial moment. Yeah. We have a lot of people who want to get married, who are yeah. getting married, and um, communication just seems to be, I don't want to say the enemy's tool on mm -hmm. ending, you know, relationship that God has ordained. Yeah. So, I mean, that topic, communication and how to heal hurt, has been something I've been talking about for a while. And I think the most important part of it for me is, how should we communicate? Do you understand? So as a single person, how should we communicate as a married person? How should, I mean, you've been married for a while now. I mean, I've been married for days. <laughs> and you know, the communication before marriage and after marriage seems to be different. It's different yeah. So, I mean, I'm going, to, I'm going to talk to Sharon because, you know, Sharon is a beautiful young lady. How, is, how does communication look and feel like from the feminine aspect? What does it feel like? Okay. What so, do you expect? So, okay, what I expect. Um, so, as I'm being a woman, a female, I'm also single. So for me, yep. what <laughs> we need to what, send, your, send your email say, to yeah, you. send the email to you know, we'll take, we'll take um, it from there. So um so for me, communication for me, it's not just so there's something you can, you can just communicate, but that for me, what's really important is effective communication and comprehension. It's one thing for me to say something. It's my duty to also understand, especially if I care about someone, if yeah. they properly understand where I'm coming from and what I'm trying to say. Okay. Right? So for me it's um it's, it's with your people it's about it's about talking about things that may be hard so when you say hard conversations okay. right how to properly pass your message across yeah in the most because i always say it's all i would i would always do for kind people and you show no kind people when they're talking to you so even oh. if you're upset you're not talking to me in so much anger because it's me and you against the problem not against each other so for me in communicating there's also kindness kindness for me is also really important when communicating with me so now we should just be kind I'm not saying just that, but you know, a kind person. For, so let me use a practical example, um, and I'll use relationships, right? Um, so when I was in a relationship, um, and myself and my partner would have an argument, I would try as much as possible, even if I know that we're both upset, sometimes with each other, right? Yeah. I try as much as possible to say, oh, what you did, X, Y, Z, what X, Y, Z you did really hurt me mm. in this kind of way, right? I would have appreciated if you had done it in this particular way, because that's how it would have spoken to me. I understand you probably were not doing it to hurt me. However, this is how it did make me feel. 
right? That's me passing my displeasure across, mm. but I'm being kind while saying it. As opposed to coming to say, you, that thing you said to me, I say, I know, like, don't try it again. No, you get, oh, wow. you're saying the same thing, yep. but you're yep. going to get two different, completely two different, different games, results. Yep. One result is you're going to have someone listen to you and properly want to add, so, okay, you know what? Let's break down how you're feeling, right? Because sometimes <clears throat> feelings is not always fact. You have a conversation and that's properly communicated because you're going to get to the root of solving the problem. But the other one, you're just going to fight. You're never going to solve the first problem. Another one will come up as a result of that. And that's why you say that the gap begins to grow. And before you know what's happening, you wake up one morning and you don't know who the person is anymore. You don't know who the person is anymore. Because things like that, we actually need to discuss. Them. So yeah. I've been married for days, like I said. Like, you know, I've been married for days, you know. We just, we just, we just got here now. We just don't know what to do. And when it comes to the thing of communication, um, in I love my wife so much. Wonderful lady, Ooh. down to earth, you know, very, you know, good looking. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's it is. But when it comes to the thing of communication, whenever we have, let me, an argument, I always like to hear I'm sorry. Mm. Because my love language is Tell affirmation. Me. What Tell is affirmation? Me, oh, you on this WhatsApp group? Affirmation, Actually, right? Yes. What's of affirmation? Okay. What's of affirmation? Of affirmation? So now, yes. I mean, tell me you're sorry. You did something wrong. Tell me you're sorry. But my wife just goes blank. Mm. Then she knows she has messed up. Then she comes and says, are you going to eat rice? And I'm like, I don't want to eat rice. No, no, well, sorry. Why? And you know, no, no, that's her sorry. But she's like, I don't want to eat rice. And she's like, why don't you want to eat rice? Because I said, I don't want to eat rice. Not by force. But I said, no, you must eat rice because I want to make rice. Mm -hmm. But the problem is because I'm a loving husband and, mm -hmm. and she's a wonderful cook. By the time I smell the... So you were losing God. I forget everything. Yeah. I've, 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 I've lost God. it. So Deja has been married for a while now. So... I know you're on this WhatsApp group. How mm. do you control it? How do you take okay. it? Okay, um, so, I mean, so being married is actually a very interesting thing, right? So coming from a place where I don't necessarily have to communicate as a single guy, I can do without it, to a marriage where you have to communicate, like you owe it to the person, you owe it to, the person. to communicate, right? Yeah. Um, so for us, right, communication has been very, very instrumental. So my wife, um, in the past was someone who like really just loved to keep to herself, avoid conflict, right? She doesn't like conflict. Yeah. So because of that, she just sweep things under the rug and just keep it bottled up and all those types of things, right? And we're able to improve that as a result of constant communication. Now, the thing is that, um, and I think Pastor B said it on Sunday that in marriage, you need to focus on fixing yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, because I was also a bit deficient in that area. Right? And we both needed to improve. So I focused on taking the lead in terms of communicating. Right? So something that maybe I wouldn't necessarily have done in the past. Like I would sit down, oh babe, um, this is what you did. This is how it made me feel. This is what I think you should have done. In fact, sometimes before I, before I even start to speak, like I whine out, right? Oh babe, how far now? Like give her kisses and all. Just to you give her the kisses. house tension first man for what give her kisses ground. i'm, I'm coming God. for you <laughs> baby girl Just i'm coming for you the tension and kind of falls on the ground and then i start to talk oh you know this you know this you know this you know that that kind of thing and i mean she gets it and this day she's beginning to understand understand and open up and i i, I mean i find ourselves in scenarios where i mean she's the one who even taking lead in terms of communication and expressing the way she feels and letting me know that kind of thing and, like it really just helps make life like a lot easier, a lot easier. right and in the communication one thing that i have to mention is that while communicating um the verbal communication is just like 20 percent right the main communication is the non-verbal communication which is yeah, the body language. i'm telling you the body language the way i'm standing and all those types of things so yeah. i'm having to pay extra attention to those types of things because i, I sincerely believe that people are not all that difficult right you just need to communicate to them and they would understand and that has been the case i mean it's a journey for us and we're constantly improving i mean we are constantly yeah. improving because so, one, one of the things is because we're talking about communication and when pastor B was talking about it i wanted him to understand the aspect of and i wish we spoke about it culture has a big control oh yeah hmm. how we communicate Yes. So, so for all of you in this <laughs> part of the world, here in Africa, culture, culture has a plays big role to play. Yeah. And I'm going to give you an example. And I don't know, you guys are just going to tell me how that marriage should look like or what should happen. So I am a photographer and you know, I go and shoot this wedding. You, know, you got, 
I'm a photographer, so I, 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 got, I went to shoot this wedding. And this guy, wonderful guy, Mohammed, is a Muslim wedding, actually. And wonderful guy, good looking, he's well spoken, he loves his wife. You would see that he loves his wife. Then there's a part in the tradition whereby the elders of the family, of the guy's family, now come and start advising him. So my job as a photographer is to capture all the moments. But while I was capturing the moment, I was hearing the most fascinating statements from these elders. What was the statement that when a wife is talking to you, she must never talk back at you? Be the man. Stand and be the man. She, you, she cannot be talking and you, you, she, you cannot be talking. A recipe, and recipe for disaster. Do you know that? So at Number that point, one. as a photographer, I, just, I dropped my camera and I was like, let me listen to what this guy these people are saying and in that instance Mohammed became a monster how did he become a monster we got to the reception and at that reception the statement Mohammed said very it was like that Aisha can be very stupid everybody here wife. we are waiting that's his wife do you understand that's his wife and this is the reception and you are like Aisha can be very stupid everybody's waiting and she's not here what's the problem and wow. in my mind, like you said, recipe for disaster. You started a marriage on the wrong foot. So I would, I mean, it's, it's, it's a long explanation, but in my mind, I was like, how do I, call, how do I advise this guy? Hmm. How do I advise him? Deji, how would you advise such a guy to change? Um... Honestly, I, <laughs> because I was heartbroken that day. you know why because I mean I mean there's a saying that I mean whatever you want to change is on right um, only make sure it changes before you get married to the person like don't go into a marriage hoping you get to change someone mm -hmm. right so to be honest if I had the opportunity I think I would have spoken to the wife not the guy and tell her that you see this thing I hope you can see this particular character is with this, with this guy is this something you're prepared to live with for the rest of your life for their wedding this was their wedding day I know hopefully she's, she's I was able to meet her for the wedding day <laughs> but like for that guy I mean if I have the opportunity to sit with him one on one I'll let him know that that is the wrong approach I mean she's your wife not your servant right I mean both of you are in a partnership do you understand? She's not your slave. She's not your servant. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes, you're the head of the house, but I mean, you need to, you 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 should end the respect, not demand it. Yeah. Right. If you want her to respect you, then you need to put yourself in a position to be respected and end it. You do you understand? So that would only make her resent you on the long run. That would only make her probably go into a shell. That would only make her to become distant and in the marriage you don't want any of those things you want her to be herself you want her to respect you because you genuinely deserve that, that respect. respect not because culture has said oh you're the man you're the lion of the tribe of your house and nobody should talk back at you <laughs> that's Man, a good one that's lion, good of, the one of, that's lion of the tribe of your house that's holding this stuff don't be now. the lion of the tribe of your house yeah. like that's that, that's all this old, that, yeah it's that's all this stuff right? yeah. because because it has gone it has eaten into our generation and I'm going to ask Sharon this. Um, being able to communicate, is it atomic or not atomic? I'll give you an instance. A wife goes to meet a guy, for instance. So, because the reason why I'm saying it is, can communication fix domestic violence? Hmm. It's a big one. Because when a lady, let's assume now, because the ladies are the ones that face it more. I'm not saying guys don't face that challenge. But the ladies are the ones that face it more. Can communication prevent domestic violence or can it add to domestic violence? Because I know women that are well outspoken. Honey, what you did was wrong. You cheated on me. I know you're cheating. Say I'm sorry, but the guy just goes ba 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 ba. Why? Because she communicated. At the same time, if she's quiet, she still gets the glass goes. So, to answer you, first things first, it's a very short answer. That man is as a product of his childhood. There's really Emotional so much baggage. I can say as yeah. his current partner or whatever that's mm. going to make him change. Yeah. Yeah. He has a lot of baggage he needs to deal with. It is not my job to teach him how to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. It's my job to remove myself and keep praying for him as a Christian partner that I am. Mm. But tell him and tell those around him as well that it's baggage he needs to deal with. Mm. 
I don't need to be in this situation, but I will care. I care for you so much that I will pray for you. Because guess what? These signs of violent people don't just happen when you enter the marriage. It yes, starts, yes. it builds. Even and the thing is that we see these things. No but here's what I, I always say. But why right? is it that they don't communicate before the wedding? So here's the problem. And this is a problem that we, we always have. And I, I, for a fact, know that it also happens, especially with us Christians, right? We go to God to pray about our life partners when we have fallen in love. That's why I was really happy when Pastor Boladi addresses me in one of the services. But that's very wrong. The moment you set eyes on someone and you feel like there might be some sort of connection, it's the time to go and pray. Because feelings and emotions haven't been heavily invested. So when God is telling you clearly, do not go there. You will hear, do not go there. Not when you fall in love. If God tells you, do not go there, you'll be hearing, wait for a bit more time. You'll be hearing something entirely different right because the bible says that we live in this world but we are not of this world it, all the things we do in our lives i say it all the time even when i'm driving a lot of people don't even know i drive in muscle memory because i'm always watching when i'm driving that's me nice percent of the time i'm in the spirit worship it right so so in that regard things like domestic violence things like rape things like sexual abuse are not things that anybody can speak english about on you changing it is God, right, that will change you. And then also you understanding and having the willingness that, okay, oh, I've been foolish for this long. It's time for me to change. That is just it. And I said, and it goes both ways, men and women. There's so much you can say that can help you. However, other situations, right, or other vices, for lack of a better word, yes, we can say communication to some extent would help. But there are some deeply rooted baggages that there's no amount of communication that's going to help. Mm. It's honestly because not. because because uh, they, they, I mean you're you're right. There's, there's no amount of communication I'm fixing. But now that let's assume that the damage has been done, yeah. right? How can because particularly we're talking about communication, how we can help relationship, how we can help marriages. So, do you have an instance of when there was something wrong in your marriage and communication just fixed it? Like better <clears throat> understanding of communication now just fixed it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think a great example would be understanding our love languages, right? Love languages. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to love languages, there is the way you want to receive love, and, give and love. there is the way you should give love to the other person. Mm-hmm. But what we often do is that the same way we want to receive love, the, the same, same way we give. To give it to mm. the other person. Yeah. So for me, my major love language is act of, sorry, um, words of affirmation, rather. What's up, bro? Right. Words of, yeah. <laughs> words of affirmation. <laughs> and this was my wife who wasn't really initially so keen on communicating like that. You can see the gap already. But she believed that, oh, maybe because our own was a combination of quality time and maybe acts of service, that if she then gives me those things, I'll be fine. Meanwhile, I'm someone who I can do almost anything for myself and everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to really take time to communicate, right? I had to um, be open, right? Because again, men tend to um, not be really open like that. Yes. So I had to be open to... Calm down now. So I had to, I had to be vulnerable enough to one let her know that, okay, babe. Vulnerability. Um, I mean, I really love you, right? And one of the ways I love to receive love is through words of affirmation. And I want to get that words of affirmation from you and nobody else. So you have to give me that love, that's that, 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 that word of affirmation, right? And I explained to her, I, I mean, we also spoke about that love language, how she loves to receive love, quality time, um, physical touch, and all of that. And we started to put um, effort in loving ourselves the way we wanted to be loved. Yeah. So, as simple as that conversation was, like it made us appear, it made life like a lot easier. In, if not, I would have been maybe giving her words of affirmation or, or acts of service, right? The ways that I love to be seen with her. She would just be like, eh, all right, yeah. And she would have been doing something else and I'll be like, man, I mean, she's not telling me what else, yeah, that kind of thing. So communication in that area is very important because loving your partner is not, it's not rocket science. It, it just, it just requires science. you guys to put in the work and communicate like legit talk about it it's possible it's very it's possible. possible very very possible because because um i i love i remember when i decided you know what i'm going to get married and 
of course I knew my communication skills awesome so I was kind of guy I wasn't the sugar in my tea roses hello the Lord has spoken to me about you <laughs> you are my wife do you accept me to be your husband you know I'm that kind of straightforward guy think about it let me know but then the communication was so good but then there was a break in transmission what was the break in transmission our secrets hmm. so I was a very good com- I mean communication I loved it but then I needed to translate oh babe I don't this I don't this I don't this I had the past but the communication the way the means of communication was very difficult so I'm going to take it more spiritual now so how do I no, and I feel that it's important to communicate. So this is come from a single, a single person's angle. Um, do you know what you want from a marriage, right? I, I, I am one of those singles that knows what I want from my marriage, down oh. to the T, uh-huh. <laughs> down to the T, <laughs> down to the T. And I know this because I have put in the work, both physically as a human being living in this world, and both as a spiritual being as someone who is not of this world, right? And um, one of the things I want in my marriage is vulnerability and vul- vulnerability and vulnerability for me is what aids effective communication for me right because my partner has first of all my partner see i don't want i just i don't just want a marriage as a marriage i want a partnership right we both bring 100 percent to the table of course there'll be days when one person is at 80 one person is at 20 you know that will happen but on a larger scale we both bring 100 percent to the table right now when there's vulnerability and he that person is my person person is my partner i know that come rain come shine this person has my back now when you already have that as a foundation it's pretty easy to have hard conversations right um you hear people say oh you want vulnerability if your husband goes and kills someone and then comes home and tells me and says oh babe cover me up first response in my head be like ah no but the truth is that i would actually cover my husband up Here's the thing, I do not expect and I do not pray, and I know God is not going to give me that kind of husband. No, he will never give me that husband, that person. However, if he happens, that's the reason why that person is my person. And my husband should be vulnerable enough to come and say, Babe, or more, I messed up. This is what I did. And we would we would deal with it as a unit. Because the person understands, he understands that and he's safe heaven. I've created a safe heaven for us where it's just both of us. Literally, it's me and you against the world. The kids may come, but it's you that I married. I don't marry children. You are my person, right? So for me, communication, something else that we need to have is we need to be vulnerable enough with each other. That is what builds intimacy. That's what, and when I say intimacy, intimacy is not just the physical part of it. It's also really deep. There's an emotional part of it. It's what we build into this. It's what we have make, you know, like me now. I would say I'm a vulnerable person, even with my friends, right? And I'm also someone who likes to talk about every single thing that's happened in my day. When I say everything, I mean everything. To the person that almost hits me on the road, to my heel getting caught in, in, a, in a paving stone. So like this tiniest, silliest things. Why? Because that is my person. And that is me including you in my life. You are aware of everything. And these things can't happen if we're not vulnerable with each other, if we haven't created a safe safe space and safe heaven for ourselves. And I say this because it also applies to my friendships as well, right? I, when I say friends, I mean my core friends, oh, because, you know, now we have three levels. So, <laughs> so I mean my core friends, right? So for me, that's another thing as a single person. That's what I look out for. Because if I'm having conversations with somebody and then I'm already seeing some sort of... Um, pride and you are raising shoulder and you don't want to talk to me about certain things i understand that there's, there's some information you need to know when to say it there's sometimes when there's some information you want to give you know that okay this is not the right time to say it because you have to also protect the person and be responsible so that when the person you know that the person is emotionally mature enough to have the conversation you would have it right there are some situations like that however on the average if i'm having to talk to you about stuff and it seems like you're closed off right i've had the second time you've not seen me there again Yes. That's it. Ah. Because because for me, I mean, I I really like this stuff because for me, one of my non-negotiables is it's communication, effectively communicating. Because so, for someone that my love language, how I like to receive love, is words of affirmation. You have to communicate. You have to say every single thing. For me, that's what it is. So as we continue, let us switch you to some clips of Sunday service and see how it went. This brother is blessing me. He's blessing me this morning. Because 
most couples don't realize communication is 90% non-verbal and 10% verbal. My brother in front here. Yeah, say something. You're your wife. Yeah, what mindset as a married, as a couple? Yeah. Is it mindset you have and you say it's like, oh wow, this affects our marriage? Yes. Yes. I think for me, after a while, the age thing started coming up. I felt, not that I'm old, but I felt there are some things I would not take because I feel I'm older. It's strange, but that's what it was, wow. some of it. Because I felt, uh, if I'm at this age, because of the society, there are some things that I will, should not you should take. Wow. Oh. Yes. That, that's great. All of it are older. I know what I'm talking about. Give it to your wife. Let me hear what your wife wants to say. <laughs> you were my, a broken my parents were separated, and I saw what my mom went through. So what my dad did to my mom, if I see any slight thing like that from my husband, I react. And knowing that he's way, no way older, Sha, I got to <laughs> But um, that mindset was there. Mag so so, so she, she's saying that she has an emotional wound and she sees the, what, the triggers. One of the ways you're going to make your mind better is to make sure you're emotionally healthy. Because sometimes, sometimes, triggers are a function of interpretation, not reality. Sometimes it might be something he said. Yeah. Maybe the way he said it. The tone of voice. The tone. Huh. But he didn't mean it that way. And after Give we, me the microphone. And after we communicate and yeah. he explains to me, I'm like, ha, I will have just been patient. But, but that mindset that, ah, me <laughs> it's, it's just Sir, you told me... Tell me one of those conversations you asked that triggered her, if you can remember any. Well, I, I think... Something you said that triggered her. Maybe a word to my food, mm, you? Maybe not my food. Maybe I said something that was sounding like being a, a, a daddy. Or you are trying to lure your man so, so give, over just me. Tell like, me one line. Tell me one line. What it could be. Or maybe shiny journey. Hold on. So that's what you said. But I'm not sure you said it with that tone. Yes or no? <laughs> Give it to her. She's going to interpret it for us. You know, even me, I know I didn't say it with that tone. No, no, say it with the tone you said it. Say it with the tone. No, not only the tone, I look too. And then, oh my God. This brother is blessing me. He's blessing me this morning. He's blessing me this morning. Because most couples don't realize communication is 90% non verbal and 10% verbal. The moment he said that, what happened? I'm like, uh uh. <laughs> I'm like, even if you want to say it was... was <laughs> what is it? You know, like, How do you define this? <laughs> and then, he's, then he all usually says, don't look at my posture. Just know what I'm trying to say. I'm like, ah, ah, but I can see you now. What is that? There are better ways to say this. Awesome. So, because you're responding to not what he said, but what is, you know, when he says that, what does it mean to you? Sincerely, think from a very deep place. Why do you feel upset? I feel that form of... I feel low. Like, how my mom felt, like, below. I feel like we are in a relationship. It's you and I. Did, Don't did you see that? She said, when he says that to me, what happens to me? You make me feel cheap. You make me feel small. Because you make you feel as if I'm commanding you and you have no option. I know it's what I should do, but this is a partnership. Why are you commanding me? But to be fair to him, that is not what he is saying. So for me, uh, I mean, DJ has said a lot of right things. For me, number my I start with this. It is better to have a broken engagement than to have a broken mind. And I say this because I have worked out of an engagement before. Um, and I, I woke up that morning, I didn't know who I, I didn't like who I was seeing. I had lost every sense of self-worth and I didn't know who I was at the time. And I said to myself, like, if I went to do this marriage, two things were going to happen. Is it that I would divorce this man or I would kill him? Killing him seemed more likely than a divorce. So I told myself before I run mad, eh, I would remove myself from what is going to make me run mad. Right. Um, and it wasn't easy. So we, we, we so. So, so like he said, literally, there's no one size fits all. You know, we always preach this gospel of leave a situation that is not, is not um, feeding you anymore. You know, walk out when it's time. You know, that's all good and fine and kind and noble and everything sweet under the sun. However, when we tell people this, people don't actually tell people how to thrive after they have, they have left. 
it's something called St Stockholm Syndrome, right? When you're in love with your abuser, it happens to people. When, you know, you feel like that's where your safety is. Uh, how do they say? The, the angel, the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know. I, I can't quite place how that saying goes, right? For me, the first thing I do, I would rather I would do rather, is I would go and pray about it. In fact, me, I always advise before you fall in love, pray first so that you, you are not having to go through all these mental gymnastics. But in, in the ah. instance, in the instance that you've already made that mistake and you've entered, because it happens to the best of us, and you've entered already, please go back to the drawing board and go back and pray, right? Because you know that you can't, because here's the thing, you can do kaku, you can write a piece of, okay, this bullet points, how I'm going to tell him or her or anything, and then you get there, and the person should say hi. Forget everything you plan to say. Oh, it's another like thing. I am. <laughs> and another thing will happen. So the first thing to do is to go and pray. Say, Holy Spirit, you know what? I've made a mistake and I want to get out of this situation. Help me. Give me a peace about what I'm about to do. And also give the person a peace. Me, I'm quite different because before, when I started to like him, my first prayer is God, if it's not for me, get tell him, get the scatter it now. I always pray that prayer. I always pray that prayer. I like scatter it now before it gets to deep. And I've seen that it's always work. Because you also you just know the next one, the person is not talking to me again. Some person will now come back and apply pressure. I say, okay, fantastic. Do you understand? So for me, prayer is very key. I will pray for you so that God, like you said, will go and soften the person's heart. So whatever I'm saying, the person will receive. Because the truth is that even if you prepare from now to next year, when it comes to matters of the heart, there really isn't a best way to say to someone who has built their entire life or has is already thinking of a future with you that it can't happen again. I know that when my break, when my last relationship, when the breakup happened, I kind of saw the signs, right? But I felt like we could fix it with communication. That's one thing. There's one thing for someone to communicate for you to even comprehend properly. I was on the side of not understanding what he was saying, but he was on the side of com communicating every day. But his communication styles were quite different from what I could properly understand, and so communication did not help us, right? So when the ha breakup happened. I didn't quite see it coming at that time. So it took me a long time to heal from him. It took me a very long time. Because I could not believe that this person that I had built my life around, and I, I was so sure we were going to get married, just all of a sudden woke up and said they don't want me anymore. And I couldn't understand it, right? So, and I'm pretty sure that he did not see anything. He didn't, he didn't mean to say some of the things he probably said, right? So that's what that's where the whole angle of, we, you never can really tell when it comes to matters of how to quite tell the person that you told you love for the longest time that you don't love them anymore. Or even if you love them, you can't. Because one thing to love somebody, you don't want them in your life. But you love them, but you don't want them in your life anymore. It's only God, to be honest, that can help us. So, and uh, this is why we actually created the small group system. Yeah. <clears throat> because if you want to learn how to communicate, the small group system can help you. Because you need to communicate with the closest closest to you. I met my wife in a small group. Surprisingly, she met, met his wife, wife in a small group. She's sliding your DM on you. Did you see I did all the sliding. I did all the sliding. All the sliding. I didn't even slide. I broke, men. I broke the you DM. Broke the DM. I scattered the whole yeah, thing. Because slide. she just gave me the signs and I just went into the scene. So you tell us about the small group system. Because I know you know yeah, group. I mean, so the small group is, I call it a family. Yeah. It's a family of like-minded believers. And it's a place where you meet other people who do life together. Um, it's a system that we use to connect men to God. It's a system that we use to give men hope. It's a system that we use to disciple people, right? And it's a system that we use to just build ourselves up in all areas of life, spiritually, marital, relationship, financially, your career, business, everything. So it's, it's a place you really want to be, right? The small group is a place you really want to be because I believe that um, human beings are God's gift to men. To men, exactly. Right? So most times when God wants to do something in your life, take it to the next level, increase you, that kind of thing. He's another man. He does not send angel Michael and Gabriel to, 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 to the earth to do it, you understand? So, I mean, you getting connected to other like-minded believers would only benefit you one way or the other. I've gotten jobs through the small group. Yeah. I met my wife through the small group, yeah. right? I mean, what more, right? So, what I'll tell you is, I mean, the best thing you can do for yourself today is to join the small group system. So Sharon, you're in a small group system as well. Yes, um, I, I agree with that 100%. I'm a small group leader um, uh -uh. myself. Leader. I'm a small group leader. And um, yes, it does help with communication because sometimes, you know, my group members might do something and I would want to react like the normal me. 
but then it helps me to be cautious because this, this is a group of people that I'm leading, right? I need to be more careful in how I speak to them. I need to also cons- consult. And the small group helps me with my prayer life and my, yeah. my studying life. Because if you're going to preach in a small group, you have to read your Bible. Yeah. You have to pray. You yeah. have to stay in the place of prayer. Because and now when you're leading a small group, you're praying for yourself, your small group, all of them. I know all of them means that they have prayer points. They have prayer points with your father and your, your mother. Yes. So sort of, you're like a spiritual head over them. And that is no small mantle to carry, right? So the small group is also helping me in my spiritual life right yeah. it helps me how i communicate with other people that i meet in the church because now i'm always eager to go to when they're doing growth track right and then go and stand because i want to recruit new members to my to myself right yeah. so basically for me the small group helps all around because my story is very funny join harvesters i joined harvesters this year in february i mean i came in was i think in january it was one service and i'm like no this is my family because i've been looking for a job for two years i didn't go to church for two years i walked in here and this was my family I did growth track February, and immediately after that, I was put into a small group, right? And I saw that, oh, people were talking to each other. Yeah. We were literally communicating, like they say, like a family. And I said to myself that, I want to give more. And I, it made me come deeper into proper church work, right? And from doing that, you know, I got into different um, um, parts of church work, and I feel very fulfilled that, oh, I was able to take the first step, and getting that sense of fulfillment started from the small group, because you know how you come to church, Pastor B is talking, everybody just finish, and you go home, now, but the small group helps you properly dissect the word, because not everybody can come and ask questions, or yeah. come and talk outside, like some of us that can, so the small group is where you can now go back and say, ah, they said this thing, I didn't quite understand it, please, can so somebody explain it? Exactly. Right? How do I go about doing this? As a big said it, but I need further insight, you know. Even me, I may not be able to even give the complete answer. But somebody else in the same small group will say, Oh, let me help you do this with this this. I mean, in my other small group, not the one that I lead, people have gotten jobs, like you said, from there. One of them is getting married and coincidentally, because I also serve in ceremonies department, I'm her wedding coordinator. Uh-huh. And she was in my small group. Amazing. It made the job very seamless for her. So I'm fighting on her battles for her because she comes from the same small group as myself. So it just, you know, it's just, it just a helps. great, it just it helps. helps. It just it helps. helps. It's just it's a great place to be. So it's please, it's do grow track and please join the small, join group, the small, small group. group. Yeah, join yeah. the small group. Deji, Sharon, I mean, I've known you guys for a while and you guys are just two phenomenal people. It gladdens my heart that you could come to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, my G. That's what's up. So, this is episode chop, chop, chop. three, and you need to communicate. If you cannot communicate with the father, you cannot communicate with your spouse, or your girlfriend, or your boyfriend. So, communication is key. But still, in the relationship, well, we're going to end it on a super, super, super banger. So, stay tuned until we meet again. Always remember. Grace, grace, grace. This, this is, is our story. story. Bye for now.